I have one. John's boat partner on Shoe Valley Lake ended up um, blowing him out because of COVID. So I've joined him today for a trip down to West Bay. John's got a fish on, haven't you, John? Just let some line on. Oh, are you on the bottom? Fish or bottom? Uh, it's not bottom yet. It was a good bite, so I've just slapped it off. So there's no messing about today. I'm using a pen, uh, pen 525 mag. I need some cranking power. There's always a chance of a smooth hound or a big bass. There's quite a bit of rough ground below me as well. The rod is a cheap old leader boat rod, 12 to 20 pound class, so it's all very pokey. First fish of the day. Can you guess what it is yet? I can't do that anymore, can I? <laughs> the gurnard. I did a video with the red gurnard in it recently. I hadn't realised that the record for red gurnard is only two pounds something. Mine must have been two pounds something. That's a grey gurnard. He's got no coloration on his wings. Beautiful eating fish, but far too small, so I'll put him back. Ow. They're all so spiny as well. I bought mainly lure gear, but wish I hadn't now, wish I'd prepared properly for baits, because the water's much more coloured up than I thought it'd be. See that? That's me just pulling a line, doing a full spike for YouTube benefits. Oh, that's, that's a good bite. Ah, I should have guessed from that lunge, it would be one of those. Big ballon at that. All I've had is that wrasse, and it's now slack tide over low. When it's slack water like this, and there's almost no movement whatsoever, I just like to pedal, just to keep the baits moving, cover ground. So I'm often asked, what are the best rod holders for a kayak? So this is what I use. They're um, pretty rubbish when it's freezing cold, but I find it in the summer, they're pretty good. Just to, You can just reach reach forward and, and hold a rod like that. And they're, they're really good. You can grab on tight or you can just hold on softly. And the best thing of all about these rod holders is, is that you can reposition them. You can have them there or you can adjust them and move them there. So yeah, I would, I would definitely um, recommend them. 0.3 knots because of the wind. You can see it just there. It tells me the speed I'm drifting at and the depth that I'm fishing in and the contours that I'm fishing over. I'm using a one ounce lead because there's no tide on the right hand rod and a two ounce lead on the left hand rod just so they don't end up fishing next to each other. And I've caught bugger all. Video footage from Mr. Halliday. I saw in the tackle shop this morning. Oh, I haven't seen a doggy for three months. Well, I caught fucking eight of them. My next comment was going to be, I haven't seen a strap conga today. Well, there's the strap conga, and it's gone right around my other rod. You absolute... Not particularly desirable fish. So you could say he's been a bit more unlucky. Served you right, John. I'd only gone in shore because you said you wanted to head over there and catch some place. And as that proved to be a complete waste of time, I headed back into deep water to join John and fish in the spot that I wanted to stay in in the first place. Right, I'm fishing at Freshwater Beach. I'm about probably three quarters of a mile off the shore in 35 foot of water. I've just passed a huge shoal of fish, don't know what they are. And all I've managed to catch this morning is one small wrasse and one even smaller whiting. So I've popped it on a hook. I'm gonna trawl that back, just drift that back actually along the bottom and uh, see if I can pick up a bass or a pollock. Set the drag light on that live bait. Here comes John, he's got a big grin on his face. Or is that a gr grimace? Racket. One undersized place, three rats, 12 doggies. 12 doggies? A mackerel. Joy. A strap conga. Sure You're that. whooping me. I mean, I've had. I've had... Oh, four gurnard. Oh. Any gurnard keepers? Meow. Oh. Meow. Pretty fair. Release me. Let me Meow. 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 I know Emma likes eating gurnard, but you are tiny, so you're going back. No, no, just, just kept the wild mackerel. You've caught loads of different species, but nothing really for the pot? No. Tide's turning. Yeah. Oh, my live bait got hit, and it's a bass. A small bass, not a lot I can do with that. The deeper water is clearing out, so I put away the bait rod and switched to lures. We don't get many days like this in October. Charlie's over there somewhere. It's a little speck. Going in a minute. Got a presentation down at Torbay Festival. 
Emma and I got some prizes to pick up. Charlie was going to come in and say goodbye, but he's gone further towards Portland. Finally hooked into something on the lure rod. It is a bass, the best one, probably a keeper, this one. In the net. John's now left me and I said to him, I'm going to stay on the water just for a little longer because I think there might be a bass to be had. Lo and behold, one bass. Is it a keeper? Probably not. It's a bit gutting really, because I could do with a nice dinner, but I've got to let it go. He's probably about 35. Shame, eating size. Give him a kiss, put him back. If you watched my last vid, then I did a, a link to where you can get these from, West Bay Angling Centre, and now got an online um, shop. It's in good nick, I can use that again. This got nailed on the drop almost straight away after catching that bass. Nice Sea Town Rass, no, West Bay Rass. I've got a bit of a hunger on for bass. I've not taken one all year. It's been ages since I've eaten one. It seems weird. I had to put a little one back because I'm the only one in the family that eats it. Yeah, I've got to catch a bigger one, even though I won't eat it all. Nice rass. Really want to try and catch one for the pot. Yeah, I'm running out of time though. See ya. Lots of small bass about. They gotta go back. Or there won't be any big ones. Will there? So all I'm all I'm doing is casting up tide. Letting it hit the bottom and then jigging it back and it's sweeping around in front of me. So the tide's really ripping through now. I'm gonna try and tie an FG knot. I've got the line tight and I'm gonna tie this lead rod to the braid by sticking the lead um, braid in my mouth, putting it under loads of tension and I'm gonna wrap it around either side of the braid about 25 times. So the great thing about the FG knot is you can have a nice long leader without a swivel. That's just braid to um, fluoro. I'll put a link on for a much better demonstration of that. Um, but as you can see, it's a nice tidy knot, flies through the rings nice and easily. Success, I'm getting there, I think, on the light gear, on a slightly smaller shad. A bass that probably is just about within a legal limit. And I'm gonna take this one. I don't normally take fish, first one of the year. If you watch my um, fly fishing for bass at Christchurch, I'm all up for catch and release, but that's a beauty. That's dinner for two, isn't it? And that's 45 centimetres. It's gonna be my last trip of the summer, this. So I will take a fish. I'm pleased with that one. Just about legal. It does cheese me off when people take illegal fish. And I'll probably get chipped for taking this one, but it's the first one in years. I think I'm gonna call it a day. Thanks for watching. And uh, John, thanks for joining me. And uh, don't forget, you can't catch fish when you're collecting trophies. See you next time. <laughs>